Good morning, Lorenzo. Good morning. It's good nice to see you. you. I've got some safety equipment for you. You can come on in, we'll introduce you to the rest of the crew. We've got a meeting going on about a blade patching job that we've got. That this will make a good day to start. Okie doke. Hey guys. I'd like you to meet our new employee, Lorenzo Ortiz. He's been working for a local contractor as an equipment operator. Lorenzo, this is George Tidwell. George. George Romero. George. Lucky Magnin. Lucky. Jerry White. Jerry. Mike Chavis. Mike. Eloy Ramirez. Eloy. And Richard Harper. How you doing, Richard? We'll be starting our blade patching down on State Road 311 this morning. I thought before we did, we'd look over the TCP, and then you guys could go ahead and get everything ready and go on out. And I'll bring Lorenzo after I've done went through the flagging procedures with him. What's the TCP? TCP is our traffic control plans, which are prepared in accordance with the manual on uniform traffic control devices. Also, we have a series of detail plans for various types of DC TCPs, which have been included in this notebook. It's provided to us by the district engineer. If there's a need to revise one of these, we could submit it to the district traffic engineer for his review and approval. Okay, here's the one. Here's the one we'll be using. If y'all will review it, if we have any questions, let's discuss them before we go out. Remember, we always begin at the sign farthest from the work area when setting it up and pick it up the opposite direction when we're done. Have you ever done any flagging before, Lorenzo? No, I've just seen others do it. As a flagger, you basically do three things. You warn, guide, and protect. Flagging is used to warn motorists as approaching a work zone, to guide the traffic entering a work zone, and to protect the motorist as well as the workers in the zone. The warning must be done at a distance well away from the actual work area. The flagger must be clearly visible to the approaching traffic. Then the flagger has several very important functions to perform, such as directing the traffic through the work zone, protecting the lives and welfare of motorists and pedestrians, protecting workers, courteously and intelligently answering the public's questions. Flagging is required when other methods of traffic control are inadequate to warn and direct drivers. Flaggers may also be required in emergencies such as traffic auto accidents, natural disasters, or man-made disasters. Flagging operations may be required in traffic control situations, such as when one lane is alternately used for both directions of travel. When the roadway is closed for a short period of time, to allow for equipment movement or blasting operations. Also, when workers are close to a lane of travel without a positive barrier. When traffic speed must be reduced and traffic control devices alone will not accomplish this. When confusing traffic flows need to be controlled at intersections. Or when installing and removing traffic control devices. Other situations where variable conditions require responsive traffic control. Your duties may require you to work in all types of weather, night or day. You are in a very vulnerable situation. Flagging is one of the most important jobs on the roadway, but it can also be one of the most hazardous. Okay, guys, are there any questions? Nope. If not, let's go ahead and we'll set up our traffic control and we'll join you shortly. <laughs> This is what they were looking at, Lorenzo. Mm. All right, Lorenzo, let me, I need to show you some flagging equipment and some of our safety gear. When hard hats are required, they should be the yellow for the visibility. And the safety vest, which you got here, shall be brightly colored, a red orange. And if the vest, when the vest becomes old and faded, you need to replace it. This particular vest could be used for night. As you can see, it has a fluorescent stripe that will reflect light. 
for night flagging, you will also wear fluorescent gloves. If a stop and slow paddle or flag are not reflectorized, you will use a flashlight with a wand like this one. When you turn it on, the light shines through it. You see? Yes, sir. Be sure the batteries are good before you take it out in the field. The primary tool to control traffic through a work zone is the stop and slow paddle. This is your paddle. The face should be a minimum of 18 inches across. The letter height should not be less than six inches high. The sign can be attached to a rigid staff. This one is about five and a half feet high and it will help you to support the, the sign. I'll demonstrate to you in just a minute how to use this paddle to control traffic through a work zone, okay? Okay. But right now, I want to talk to you about this flag. As you can see, it's a fairly large flag. It should be about 24 by 24 inches. The flag should only be used in extreme situations, such as windy days or in emergency situations, or when traffic can be controlled by a single flagger. So the primary tool for controlling traffic through a work zone is the stop and slow paddle. Right. Now let me demonstrate using the stop and slow paddle. Let's pretend I'm standing on the shoulder of the, of the road just off the pavement. And let's say a truck is coming toward us from that direction and you want to stop it. Face the stop sign toward the approaching truck, look directly at the approaching driver, raise the exposed palm of the free hand to indicate the vehicle is required to stop. Eye contact with the driver is also very important. Be courteous, but at the same time, be firm. Stay alert at all times. Know what is happening in front of you and behind you. Occasionally look to see what's happening behind you. If you're working with another flagger who is at the other end of the work zone, keep in constant contact with him. You can do this with hand signals or two-way radios. Know what your crew and equipment are doing. If trucks are pulling out, know in what direction they'll be traveling. Another thing you want to remember when stopping traffic after you have stopped the first vehicle, you have to motion to the other vehicles that are following it. You have to motion to them that they are to stop too. After the first vehicle is stopped and come to a complete stop, walk toward the center of the road, but never cross the center strap. Set your, set your paddle with the stop sign facing the traffic. Again, raise the exposed palm of the free hand and indicate to those drivers that you want them to stop. Okay, Lorenzo, now let's say that the road is clear and you're ready to release the traffic. Walk back to the shoulder of the road, turn the paddle to the slow side, and with the free hand, motion to the drivers to proceed. Any questions so far? No, none so far. Okay, let me give you another scenario. Let's say you're flagging and you just want to slow traffic down. To slow the traffic down, show the slow side of your paddle, and with the palm of your free hand, raise and lower it in this manner. This is a universal sign, which means slow down. Something else you can do to slow down the traffic is to hold the paddle with the stop side visible to the driver. Before the approaching vehicle comes to a complete stop, flip your sign to the slow side and then motion with your, your hand for the slow downs. Then motion for the driver to proceed. Okay, let's go through the procedures with the flag. Remember, the flag can only be used in extreme circumstances such as windy days or emergency situations. To stop traffic, face the traffic and extend the flag across the lane of traffic in a stationary position. Raise the palm of your free hand toward the traffic to indicate for it to stop. To slow the traffic down through a work zone, extend the flag in a horizontal position across the traffic lane, and before the vehicle comes to a complete stop, lower the flag to your side and motion with your free hand for, the, for them to proceed. 
With your free hand, you want to point in the direction the driver is to proceed. If you want the driver to change lanes, you'll point with your free hand to the lane. Okay, now let's say you, you've stopped the traffic and you want to, you're ready to release it. Lower the flag and your arm to your side. With your free hand, motion the driver to proceed. Never wave the flag or use the flag to point. Always use your free hand. When using the flashlight at night, use it in the same manner as you would the flag. To stop traffic, hold the, hold the flashlight across the lane of traffic and raise the free hand palm up toward the traffic. Remember to wear your fluorescent gloves at night. They're highly visible. To release traffic, drop the flashlight and the arm to your side and motion with the free hand for the driver to proceed. Do you have any questions before we go on? No, not at this time. Again, I want you to remember eye contact with the driver is very important. Talk to the driver with your eyes. Let them know that you're in charge, but at the same time, be, be concerned about their safety while driving through the work site. Let them know that you care. Lorenzo, if you don't have any questions, let's drive out to the work zone. Let's go. This here. Here we go. Well, Lorenzo, how's your first day on the job so far? Okay, I got all my paperwork done yesterday and I'm ready to go. Good, we're on State Road to 311. We're traveling, we're going to an area where we're gonna be doing some blade patching work. I guess I'll be doing some flagging out here. Yeah, I'll drive through the job so you can see how the traffic control relates to what we talked about back at the patrol yard. But especially I want you to notice and see exactly how the flagger does his job and how important his job is out here. Well, is blade passing the only type of work where a flagger is needed? No, remember that we said earlier that there are other situations where we need a flagger to warn, guide, and protect. For example, whenever we need to work in the middle of an intersection or when we have dump trucks hauling across the entire highway, a flagger is needed any time we need to slow down traffic because of hazards to the motorist or for the protection of our workers. Remember that the flagger should never be out here without the benefit of advanced warning signs. We have several typical traffic control setups in the TCP binder. Feel free to look at these at your convenience and get with me anytime you have any questions. Lorenzo, we're now approaching the work area. The first thing we'll see is the road work ahead sign warning the driver to be alert and cautious. Several warning signs are set up in advance of the work area so that the driver has time to react to the sign messages. As we drive further, we notice a be prepared to stop and a flagger sign. These signs are warning the motorist as to what to expect as he approaches the work area. Now you can see the flagger coming into view. Our flagger has just received a signal from the other flagger on the far side of the work zone, indicating he is about to let traffic through from his side and that our flagger should stop us. Notice how our flagger is positioned on the shoulder with the stop side of his paddle facing us and his left hand out motioning us to stop. He stays on the shoulder for his protection until the lead vehicle comes to a full stop. Now he is moving in front of the lead vehicle toward the center of the road always keeping his stop paddle in full view of us and others behind us. He talks briefly with the motorist in front of us to tell him what our crew is doing and how long the wait will be. He steps back in front of the lead vehicle after he is assured that all of us are coming to a stop. He looks back at the other flagger and signals him to let its traffic come through. The other flagger turns his paddle to, slow, to the slow side for his traffic, steps back onto the shoulder, and with his left hand motions traffic through. As 
you can see, the last vehicle has just passed by us, and now our flagger is signaling the other flagger to stop traffic on his side. The other flagger is now doing exactly what our flagger did to stop traffic on his side. He now motions to our flagger to let us go through. Our flagger now turns his paddle to the slow side, steps back onto the shoulder, and motions us to go through with his left hand. As we drive through the work area, notice how we have a buffer zone about 200 feet long in advance of the actual work area. This is for added protection of our workers in case some motorists don't slow down in time and goes through a couple of cones before coming to a stop. We're now at the end of the work zone and the flagger is motioning us to maneuver back onto the appropriate lane. Notice the end road work sign telling us that we are now out of the work area and can resume normal speeds. I'm gonna turn around and come back through the work area from the other direction. As you can see, the same series of advanced warning signs are displayed in this direction as well. The flagger is now coming into view. He is positioned on the shoulder with the slow side of the paddle facing us and is motioning with his left hand to slow down. He is also signaling us with his left hand to go through. By using both hand signals, he can keep us moving through the work area at slow speeds for protection of our workers. Again, as we drive past the work area, we notice an end, ro end road work sign. Any questions, Lorenzo? No, but now I realize how important a flagger's job is and the problems that can occur if the flagger is not alert and communicating properly with the other flagger. If you remember that your job as a flagger is to warn the motorist of the work ahead, guide the motorist safely through the work area, and protect our workers, I'm sure you'll do fine. The flagger needs to be alert constantly, watching for motorists that may not be paying full attention to their driving. He also needs to have eye-to-eye -eye contact with the other flagger and clear hand signal communications. Eye-to-eye -eye contact and clear hand signals are just as important between the flagger and the motorist. Well, Lorenzo, now that you've seen how it's done, I'm going to have you relieve one of the flaggers so that he can take his lunch break. Any questions? No, I think I've got it. George? I've reviewed the flagging procedures with Lorenzo a little more. We've drove through the work zone a couple of times from both directions to show him what the public would be seeing. What I'd like to do, and he thinks he's ready, is to get him to relieve you for a little while while you take your lunch break. And if you would, if you'll just stay here with him a little while in case he has any questions. Okay. All right. 